Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sometimes before we before we hit record, if you only could see the behind the scenes. And today is a very special day. I know she won't be happy about me saying, but today is Baba Bhakti's birthday. Hari Baba. Fourteenth of December. And 14th December is when Srila Prabhupada installed Sri Sri Radha and Shara. So it's our birthday. Yeah, parents' day of their lordships. The elder than me. Uh, they don't look it though. She was born in 1906. Right. She doesn't look it though, does she? Very good <laughs> for 116 years old. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we're reading from the Bhagavatam, which is timeless, ageless, and simultaneously ever youthful. Okay, Canto for you, Chapter 31, Text 16, The Movements of the Living Entities. Mm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <laughs> if you go high, go low. <laughs> okay. All right, text 16. Which class is the way? What are you doing? Oh, having a breakdown. No one other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the localized Paramatma, the partial representation of the Lord, is directing all inanimate and animate objects. He is present in the three phases of time, past, present and future. Therefore, the conditioned soul is engaged in different activities by his direction. And in order to get free from the threefold miseries of this conditional life, we have to surrender unto him only. Poor, poor. When a conditioned soul is seriously anxious to get out of the influence of the material clutches, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated within him as Paramatma, gives him this knowledge, surrender unto me. As the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, give up all other engagements, just surrender unto me. It is to be accepted that the source of knowledge is the Supreme Person. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Matasmite gyanam apohanam cha. The Lord says, through me one gets real knowledge and memory, and one also forgets through me. To one who wants to be materially satisfied, or who wants to lord it over material nature, the Lord gives the opportunity to forget his service and engage in the so-called happiness of material activities. Mm. Similarly, when one is frustrated in lording it over material nature, and is very serious about getting out of this material entanglement, the Lord from within gives him the knowledge that he has to surrender unto him. Then there is liberation. Hmm. It's interesting that how Krishna gives you yeah, information from within as to what to do. You know, when you're searching, when you're ready <coughs> to receive this knowledge. So, like some... There's, one devotee was saying they would walk past the temple like every day on the way to work or whatever mm. and then one day oh what's going on in there you know like and they just happen to go maybe first into the restaurant and through there taking prasadam but like that you hear stories like that back when they become devotees and they say yeah I used to go here all the time you know in this area I used to do this but or like I remember like my parents got all the books, most of the books in the 70s, 80s, 70s, 80s and then after a certain time when I was a teenager or whatever and you're not feeling so good, you know, searching, whatever, and I just opened the Bhagavad Gita and it was like, whoa, yeah, it's interesting how, I, yeah, Krishna gives you intelligence or you might be walking down the street and a book distributor stops you and that's the beginning you know you why that street why that time when that person was? so it's like yeah Krishna is directing the wanderings of the living entities mm. according to what they require and need and asking for and those who have <coughs> excuse me little or no faith 
they say, oh, this was just chance or something like that. And of course, the other side is, it was your destiny. Mm -hmm. um, but destiny doesn't always need to include God, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, we understand that Krishna is within the heart of every living entity. And as this purport mentioned, Mata Smirtir Gyanama Pohanam Cha, that he gives uh, knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. And, you know, he's always knocking, trying to get us to listen. And when we start to try to tune in, he gives uh, inclinations or inspiration uh, a little more subconsciously, but the more that we try to bring it to the forefront, the more that it becomes revealed and the more we see things around us happening and, and things are really, really... And that's, I know a lot of people in the beginning they have experiences, I know I did, of like very synchronistic type of things that like, oh my God, I was just thinking about that and this happened and then next thing you know, I was at the temple and I met this person and I was that, and this thing and I was just, oh wow, and it's like all of a sudden, do, 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 you know, really mystical things. But it's just finally we've turned to him inside and he's starting to mm -hmm. reveal things and make mm -hmm. things happen. So it's like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Should we read the next paragraph? Mm -hmm. This knowledge cannot be imparted by anyone other than the Supreme Lord or His representative. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Lord Chaitanya instructs Rupa Goswami that the living entities wander in life after life, undergoing the miserable conditions of material existence. But when one is very anxious to get free from the material entanglement, he gets enlightenment through a spiritual master and Krishna. This means that Krishna, as the super soul, is seated within the heart of the living entity. And when the living entity is serious, the Lord directs him to take shelter of his representative, a bona fide spiritual master. Directed from within and guided externally by the spiritual master, one attains the path of Krishna consciousness, which is the way out of the material clutches. Yeah. I think it's just basically repeating what we just mentioned, except it adds the point of the spiritual master. Uh, the guru <clears throat> is the external manifestation of the super soul. What does that mean? It means that the spiritual master becomes the guide for what the super soul is trying to tell us. And um, yeah, that can happen in so many different ways but uh, but yeah but that's that's the principle that the spiritual master is um, is simply giving knowledge in a material not a material but a, a manifest way <clears throat> whereas the super soul is a voice more or less inside a, a, an unconscious uh, mm. voice that we can't really always say oh was that really the right thing mm. you know mm like that. Therefore, there is no possibility of one's being situated in his own position unless he is blessed by the Supreme Personage of Godhead. Unless he is enlightened with the Supreme Knowledge, one has to undergo the severe penalties of the hard struggle for existence in the material nature. The spiritual master is therefore the mercy manifestation of the Supreme Person. The conditioned soul has to take direct instruction from the spiritual master and thus he gradually becomes enlightened to the path of Krishna consciousness. The seed of Krishna consciousness is sown within the heart of the conditioned soul. And when one hears instruction from the spiritual master, the seed fructifies and one's life is blessed. So he's stressing the importance of the spiritual master and the link or the connecting factor with the Supreme Lord. Mm. Yeah. A living, not to get too conscious, a living spiritual master. Mm. And this is also coming from Chaitanya Charitamrita Prabhupada mentioned earlier, the um, um, Bhakti Lada Bij verse. Uh, Guru Prasade by Bhakti Lata Bij. Um, I can't remember the Sanskrit now. Uh, 
Brahmand uh, 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 Brahmanda Brahmate Bhagyavana Jeev Gu Prasade by Bhakti Lada Beach, something like that. Um, <coughs> that yeah, by the mercy of uh, the spiritual master, the Bhakti Lata Beach, the seed of devotional service is planted within the heart and it begins to sprout. The purport is very amazing. Uh, Prabhupada uses a similar concept in the purport to, I think it's um, one of the seed verses in Bhagavad Gita, 10 10 I think it is. Um, the... Uh, 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 yeah, ten ten of the Bhagavad Gita. Just trying to remember that verse, Sanskrit. The old brain is going not so well. Tesham sadata yuktanam bhajatam pretty purvikam didami buddhi yogam tam gena mamupiyantite. That's the verse. Ten ten. <laughs> okay, next one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 31.17, verse 17, chapter 31. Fallen into a pool of blood, stool, and urine within the abdomen of his mother, his own body scorched by the mother's gastric fire, the embodied soul, anxious to get out, counts his months and prays, O oh my Lord, when shall I... A wretched soul be released from this confinement. I mean, the Bhagavatam gives such a different perspective on life in the womb and birth, the birthing process. Uh, because normally you would just be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's like mm. I do ceremonies all the time for pregnant ladies. And, you know, I'm not usually getting into the whole thing. You know, by the way, that soul inside your body is being tortured right now. You know, so... Mm. But yeah, I mean, just think if someone tried to, you know, fold you up and put you in a small, you know, box. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sat you near a fire and um, there was a tube coming into the box and it pumped in regurgitated food. Mm. And um, that which whatever someone else was eating had mm. already eaten, basically. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, how does that work? Where, how does the umbilical cord thing work? I mean, where does it get plugged into? And then, it's in the belly button. It's in the belly button, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So it goes straight into the stomach of the, of the living entity, yes. But how did that get connected to any part of the, the lady? <laughs> I mean, a miracle. I can't, I'm not, <clears throat> I can't deal with this stuff. I'm Any doctors out there, I'm sure you've got, you know, <laughs> we could probably look it up. I'm not sure I really want to look it up. No, but, don't. Don't Google. But imagine you're in a box like that, and then inside the box is stool, mm. blood, and mm. urine. I presume your own, because I don't know if the mother's stool, blood, and urine is inside of the womb. It says you've fallen into... No, but into, it's in there somewhere. No, I think what it's saying is I've fallen into a pool. Well, it's in there because the living entity is le leaving it in there. As the, bo the, the baby is it's developing, it's starting to you know, do all these things. And then it mentioned earlier about the little worms that are biting the... I mean, mm. Hello, I, I think, yeah, I'd be praying, let me out of the box as well. Okay, purport. The precarious condition of the living entity within the womb of his mother is described here. On one side of where the child is floating is the heat of gastric fire, and on the other side are urine, stool, blood, and discharges. <coughs> Excuse me. After seven months, the child who has regained his consciousness feels the horrible condition of his existence and prays to the Lord. Counting the months until his release, he becomes greatly anxious to get out of the confinement. Rightly so. The so-called civilized man does not take account of this horrible condition of life and sometimes for the purpose of sense gratification he tries to kill the child by methods of contraception or abortion. 
unserious about the horrible condition in the womb, such persons continue in materialism, grossly misusing the chance of the human form of life. Wow. Mm. So, anyway, some very heavy stuff to think about, mm -hmm. which we often don't think about. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember once, one devotee, it was his birthday, and everyone was wishing him a happy birthday, and he's quite a senior devotee, <coughs> you know, relatively renounced person, a very renounced person. And he just said, you know, why is everybody celebrating this day? And I was like, oh. And he said, you know, what, the day that I was pushed out of the womb of my mother, you know, covered in blood and stool and urine, you know, and into the material world where, you know, even more suffering. And I was like, okay, I think he's really got the idea of not wanting to take birth again. And isn't that the point? The point is to convince us that we don't want to go through this again, just like the prayer. Oh my Lord, when shall I, a wretched soul, be released from this confinement? We should be asking ourselves that question now, right? This confinement. We think we're free here, right? Do you think you're free? We should be asking ourselves, when will I get free from this confinement? Next paragraph, the word Kripanadi is significant in this verse. D means intelligence and Kripana means miserly. Conditional life is for persons who are of miserly intelligence or who do not properly utilize the intelligence. In the human form of life, the intelligence is developed and one has to utilize that developed intelligence to get out of the cycle of birth and death. One who does not do so is a miser. Just like a person who has immense wealth but does not utilize it, keeping it simply to see. A person who does not actually utilize his human intelligence to get out of the clutches of Maya, the cycle of birth and death, is accepted as miserly. The exact opposite of miserly is Udara, very magnanimous. A Brahmana is called Udara because he <coughs> utilizes his human <coughs> intelligence for spiritual realization. He uses that intelligence to preach Krishna consciousness for the benefit of the public and therefore he is magnanimous. Mm. So it's interesting because like we were saying, you know, you're just saying wanting to be free and get out of these confinements and that. Now it's interesting because I was thinking, actually I don't mind not getting out of it as long as I'm able to be like doing devotional service and being with devotees and you know it's like when you're fully engaged and you know focused you don't notice it but it's like yeah for me anyway when it's you get a bit slackened slackened in the sense that maybe using the mind too much for stuff other than Krishna <laughs> You know, and you just think, oh, yeah, I like this, oh, I look like that, oh, I've got this, oh, I've got that. I'm not saying we should, not like, we should act like things are not happening in terms of health or life situations. I'm not saying like that, like, be um, artificial, mm. if that makes sense. But for sure, there's a certain level of it's okay. Well, it's like this. If there's a certain level of it's okay to be in this, body or this life or this world for those who are say trying to be devotees and then at the same time it's, it's the same thing is true as even Prabhupada says here for those who are trying to enjoy it's also okay because I get my holidays and I, I have a certain standard of living and I have certain luxuries and I enjoy you know does that make sense what I'm saying no not at all to me anyway <laughs> If you understood her at home, please give a little bit of confidence. I'm basically so. repeating what Srila Prabhupada is saying. Oh, okay. And what Srila Prabhupada is saying is that we all have intelligence. Some people have miserly intelligence. Yes. And then some people have udara, very magnanimous. Magnanimous intelligence. So the ones who are miserly, they, for them, they're okay, though, in this material world because they're misers insofar as they are not broad-minded enough to 
concern themselves with why am I here? What is the point of this life? It's such a fragile life. Why am I, you know? What am I meant to do here? Just wake up, nine to five job, enjoy my senses, you know, chase around a man or a woman like a dog and just like, whatever. You know, I'm just saying, I'm just conscious my hair's just... <laughs> but at the same time, a devotee has, <laughs> has intelligence, um, just as the miser does, and then they're using it in a way like, I'm really happy as you can be, as much as you can be in this material world, because I get to be with devotees, because I get to do you know, carry out devotional service, because I'm locked in, engaged in that way. That's what I'm saying. If you understand what I'm saying, give me a comment below. Or even if you don't, give me a comment below. Yeah, if you don't, <laughs> give a really good comment below. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that. Yes. Um, and uh well that's enough to ponder on it certainly is <laughs> okay thank you all very very much stay warm please it's very cold we did try to go outside to oh read, yeah we were outside and we gave up because it was freezing yeah with no sitting outside and we it was black to get ice a, yeah we we're trying to get a black a black round a background <laughs> with some snow yeah that's and there nice. is snow around it but it was and i i tend to fall over in this um, black ice yeah. so I'm going to stay indoors till January uh -huh. okay <laughs> Hare Krishna everyone thank you very much Grantarashi Mabhagavatam Ki Jai